welcome back to the channel today i'm looking in on the summer mead i think it's finished fermenting it was started on the third it's now the 16th it's had way more time than it needed it's going to be dry um but what we're going to do is we're going to rack it off we're going to give it a taste and we're going to see whether we back sweeten it now i've got a plan of how much i'm going to back sweeten it i'm going to back sweeten it the same amount as i did with the winter warmer which used the same berry mix uh, but it had chilies in as well, which was absolutely lovely. There's just the right amount of heat. There's no chilies in this one. This is just a replica of the other one that I brewed for a mate who said that he really liked the other one, but he wasn't too keen with the chilies in. He said he'd drink a bucket load of it if it didn't have the chilies in. So, yeah, here it is. This one's for you, Jim. Um, so, we've got stuff out already, really, uh, but I do need momentarily my old booklet which i'm gonna to have to rummage for tiny little thing that i used to write in it should be in here really but it's not because i'm not that organized as usual but anyway let's get cracker lacking first of all take the lid off and have a little look at what we got all the vaselines and all petroleum jelly all over my hands we're not going to need this lid now. I'll get you a little video of that so you don't need to bother with the picture. That's what we've got so far. That's what we're working with. Looks all nicely fermented and so on. Right, so we're going to rack. I'm going to take it up here. Are we going to rack? Shall we do a hydrometer test from here? I think so. I think we do a hydrometer test from here and then decide whether we rack or not. Because if it hasn't finished fermenting, for whatever reason, I mean, it's had plenty of bloody time. If it hasn't finished, we might as well just let it go where it is. Super dry. So, it is zero point nine nine four. 0 0.994 which is going to give it about 13 percent i believe and i only know that because not because i'm clever but because the one that i just racked off a minute ago uh, the pina colada style one that has a sp reasonably the same start and an almost exactly the same finish so that's that's the only reason i know it's not because i'm smart and can work mathematical stuff out like that because i can't right so we are going to rack this but I'm not going to tip that back in there because that would be silly because it's just going to kick up all the yeasty stuff at the bottom. So that's going to go into there. Then this is going up here, but I'm going to move one of those out of the way because I kind of need to be able to see what's cracker lacking to a degree. I think that's just about right, really. Speed this up. Okay, so that was it racked off. And I do like brewing in them buckets, although the seals aren't very good. I say it every single time. I don't mind brewing in those larger buckets because you can make sure that you're going to get four and a half litres minimum out of it. So I've got four... Maybe if I took them out, it'd be four and a half if there's still in the one in there. So say about four and a half litres is where if you was to brew that in a demijohn like this, 
you top it up you'd only get once you've taken all your fruits out and stuff there's probably a litre's gap where you've lost it so yeah bigger buckets better yield yada yada anyway um the gravity of today is what no it's not one it's zero point nine nine what did i say it was eight i'm gonna write eight and i'll double check it um yep and we're going to add some stoppers now so we will need sodium metabisulfate also known as Campden tablet which we're going to crush to a nice fine powder and then we're going to add it to the bottom of this demijohn which we're going to put it in the uh, berry mead into there uh, and what this will do is this will stop it from fermenting any further although it can't ferment any further because there's no sugars but we are going to add more honey to this oh never had a never had a taste never actually had a taste so let's do that now while we can see what we've got it's got a lovely color i mean that's lovely it's a bit hazy at the moment but when it's cleared through that'll be beautiful very very tart all them berries it's got Strawberries, raspberries, blackberries, red currants and black currants. Or was it strawberries, blackberries, red currants, black currants? Yeah, I don't think it has raspberries in it. Mmm. That makes your tabs laugh. That's got some bite. So yeah, let's add the fermentation stoppers. And then I'll go find out how much honey. I am requiring because I want to get it as near as damn it to the um, the winter warmer, but just without the chili because my mate liked it. So um, we're doing a gallon, so the potassium sorbet is half a teaspoon. In like that. Then we rack from here into there. That starts mixing it. Then we gently mix anyway to release any waste carbon dioxide that's been left in the liquid. So we're gonna speed this bit up. That is it now racked off into there. I've been looking at these notes and I don't know what the bloody hell I was doing with this mead. This was from November 2021. So it would have been quite early on in the mead making, I believe. Um, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November. So no, I've been doing it for six months. Because I did one mead per month, a minimum of one mead per month for a year. Yeah. Just because I could and I enjoyed making mead. After the first mead, I was hooked. Not just only on the process, but just the, the drinking and the loveliness of it. Anyway, what we're doing now is we're mixing in the fermentation stoppers, but at the same time, we are relieving it of any waste CO2. I've probably already said that, but according to this, bear in mind I'm not adding the chilies into this. I used a different yeast. I used Lalvin EC1118 for this, but I think that was only because I had a packet of it left 
from when I'd done something else. I think it was from when I'd done a Trojniak. Um, OG was, yeah, but then I added more honey, but then it seemed to ferment that honey. So I added more honey, but then it seemed to ferment that honey. I ended up adding even more honey. So I'm going to guesstimate 300 grams of le honey to be mixed in. And then we'll give it a, a wiggle around. We'll take a hydrometer test. The reason why I'm adding more honey is because I wanted it to taste like the other one tasted originally. And it was blooming gorgeous. Um, I believe I used orange blossom honey. No, I used some set honey for this for some bizarre reason. I think I just wanted to try it, see if it worked, which it did, because you just melt it down. Do is heat honey up and it turns into an even runnier solution. So set honey, heat it up, it comes out runny. Bada bomb, bada bing. So we're gonna need to measure this as we do it. Just for argument's sake, we're looking for a specific gravity of uh, 46, which seems quite high. Hmm. So I'm going to have 300 grams of honey. Try not to touch the sides. And I know this is going to increase the volume, as you can probably see it doing so, but it's not going to ferment it with a bit of luck. We're wanting that honey to balance off the tartness of the berries because it was actually, like I say, it didn't have the raspberries in. It is a blackberry red currant, strawberry and black currant mix. So now I'm just blending that honey back in so that it mixes in, which will give us a gravity reading because we have to take that gravity reading to make sure that when we come to bottle it, that it hasn't continued to ferment. Because if it has, we need to wait longer until it's stopped. If it's only gone down by 0.2, it's finished. Blatantly finished. Um, still got honey in the center there. The side bits have done, but there's a bit in the center that just needs a bit of a, a jiggle. My honey don't go jiggle jiggle, it pours. Oh. Oh, I'm just blabbering. Right, I'm gonna speed this up so you don't have to listen to me chat shit. And I'm going to stir this in until I think it's gone. So when you're back sweetening, mixing in your honey, anything worth doing is worth doing properly. It takes a long time to gently mix honey back in. You, when you think you're finished, just do it a little bit longer. Just an extra five minutes, gently just mixing it in otherwise it's all going to sit at the bottom and it's not going to be mixed into the the beverage it might slowly work its way in but i highly doubt it so that's where we're at at the moment we are going to take a hydrometer reading and i'm hoping it comes up to about the 34 that it says there Or the 46. Now, I don't think 300 grams of honey is going to do that, to be fair. This might, the old one might have been calculated in, incorrectly. But we don't know until we do the hydrometer test. So here we go. See what we've got. So 
so that's not even resting above 10. Right now, it's actually at 1.008, which might mean we need more. Or did I incorrectly calculate that? I did. That needs to be down to four. Dagnib it. Actually, before I do, let's have a taste. Because you never know. It could taste nice. And if it does, we could save the honey for another mead. Still tart. Not a lot of sweetness, it's better. But I've uh, miscalculated because my maths is crap. No, we're gonna add more, more honey, honey. Gently put that back in there. Oops, pissing all over the sides. Excuse my French. Now, if you do know me personally, you'll know that I swear a hell of a lot. In everything I do, I swear when I'm happy, I swear when I'm mad, I just swear. But for my videos, I do try not to. You might get an S word, and I just said peeing uh, the uh, the swear for that. But hey, I'm sorry, but that's me. That's just how I roll. Um, okay, so now we are going to add the other. I'm going to go for try and get a hundred and. I'm going to go for another 100, actually. I want, In fact, what I want is I want this to sit at... Um, hmm, on the scales here. About 400. So let's put some more in and see what we can get. Four seven six. Getting a bit close to the top. We might have to just call it, just in case it does start fermenting again. Which I bloody hope it doesn't. Four hundred and four. That'll do me. That's more than I wanted, but I want to reach that sweetness that this was at. It said it finished at. 1.034 after adding another 200 grams of honey. I added a shed load of honey to this. 908 grams to begin with. I'm just going to talk you through this. But this is obviously the one that I put the chilies in. So I was using the sweetness to have balance the, the, the spice but it had 908 grams of set honey to begin with then added what looks like another 350 grams then later on added another 350 grams and then on the next page it says I added 200 grams That's a lot of honey but it did say that it finished really sweet like i think that's classed as like almost a dessert mead let's have a look we've got a book of um a big book of mead recipes here and it does say about sweetnesses sweetness levels that's it so dry is between 0 0.998 and 1.8 zero one zero so that would have been classed as dry if i hadn't have added any honey semi-sweet is classed as 1.011 to 1.020 which is still under what we had because we had 1.108 didn't we yeah 
so we've added more. Sweet is 1.121 to 1 1.030, and the dessert mead, where it's basically just like, you know, you'd have it as a sweet after a meal. It's that sweet, which some of them are good. The Trojniak that I did, that was at like 46, and that was only because the yeast had given up, but it was bloody gorgeous. Me and my mate polished it off the other night. Anyway, I'd stop yabbering. So dessert mead is 0 0.131 or higher. So this would be classed as a dessert mead, mead if it reaches the final gravity of what that is there. But we need to mix this in, speed it up, and then we'll have a look at the uh, hydrometer test again. Okay, more mixing. That honey is now, I believe, mixed in. Took a forever, but you know, that's life. You gotta mix it in. So now I'm gonna take another hydrometer test and see if we're a little bit closer to that final gravity that we wanted, or, or that was on the other mead. We shall see. And when we do mix, by the way, you do have to do it really carefully because this is at around 13, uh, ABV of 13. So that's not even putting up all that much. That's uh, 16 now. Hmm. The mind boggles. Well, let's give it a little taste and we'll see what we're doing with it. I think that's going to be enough because it was almost there last time. Straight away. You got that tanginess, sweetness and the flavour of honey. Hmm. Bang on. We'll leave it at that. Sod it. I'm not messing around no more. So about 300 grams of honey added. And now we're gonna pop that back in there, nice and gently, as to not cause any bubbles, or as little as possible. It's all been sterilized, so it's perfectly fine. It's past the fermentation stage, and the alcohol content is it's high enough to keep it sanitary anyway. All right, so that's that there. We're going to take, oh, nearly pulled the wrong bloody jobby off. I'm going to take this airlock from here. And we're just going to use the same airlock, but just with a different type of bung. Because the one on that does not fit this kind of vessel. And then there you have it. That is that put into secondary. Took a bit longer than we thought. And we've got a hell of a lot more of it than we thought as well. Because of uh, adding the honey which increases the volume. Um, we'll label it up. We'll make notes. And we'll be back probably, well, as soon as it clears, it'll be ready for bottling. And that's the summer berry mead. my belly mead and it was started on doesn't matter when it was started um about 13.5 percent is what we thought but we'll double check that when we come to finish the end of the video which will be well the next part of this which will be the bottling video of this in say one to two weeks once it's cleared out uh and that's a lot took a bit longer but we got there Take it easy, see you soon.